Hi, in this video I'm going to discuss the median nerve and the relationship to carpal tunnel syndrome. I've got a skeleton here that shows the brachial plexus and the median nerve will come from all the levels as in C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1. As it exits it passes between the anterior and the middle fibres of the scalene over the first rib under the clavicle and off its way down into the arm. Typically the median nerve tends to get compressed within the wrist um, as in within the carpal tunnel, which we look at now. The carpal tunnel, if you're looking at the hand, we have the scaphoid tubercle just here, the trapezium bone is under the thumb, we've got the uh, pisiform here, and then we've got the hook of hamate. So between these four palpable bones will be the carpal tunnel. The carpal tunnel comprises 10 structures. We've got four tendons from the flexor digitorum superficialis and four tendons from the flexor digitorum profundus, the median nerve, which comes from C5 to T1, and also the flexor pollicis. So the space is relatively small. Now, if you have a compression of the median nerve from the wrist, typically, the person tends to have altered sensation to the thumb, index, middle, and half a ring finger. If you do any neural test in, they might not be able to detect sensation or lack of sensation or light touch to the index finger just here. But also, if you were to use the blunt and the sharp, again, they might not be able to detect sharp or blunt in this area of the hand. Now, the median nerve in particular, apart from supplying the muscles of the forearm, or part of, will supply this pad of muscle here, which is called the phenar eminence. The phenar eminence is mainly four muscles that are called the loaf. So the L, the O, the A, the F. The L stands for the lateral two lumbricals. The O is opponens pollicis, the A is abductor pollicis brevis, and the F is the flexor pollicis brevis. So these four muscles are contained within here. So if you've got a problem with the median nerve, then you might find, and by the way, there's potentially someone like 50 to 100 separate causes of, of carpal tunnel syndrome. Someone like an encephalitis, yeah, caused by liver disease, can give you carpal tunnel syndrome to the lady who is pregnant. Now, this muscle here, or the pad of, if I just ask you just to push against my finger, you can see the pad of muscle here. So if you have atrophy of that, then it could be a median nerve issue. If you wanted to test it, then if you simply pinch like this, and I try to separate the pinch, then that will test the inability of the median nerve to contract those muscles. Okay, so that's normally a good sign. If we do have a carpal tunnel, we can potentially do a Tinel tap sign, which is from a French neurologist called Jules uh, Tinel. And you can tap in here to see if maybe the symptoms is, is referring into that area. But commonly, there's a test called the Phelan test, named after George S. Phelan. And then we can do it one of two ways. One way is to place the back of your hands together and to see if that brings on symptoms. And we normally will say to the patient uh, to hold that position for 30 to 60 seconds. But the studies show that if you do the reverse Phelan's, Okay, and then we hold that one, then that can seem to, to bring on symptoms a bit more often. So that will be a discussion of the median nerve, and then the muscle, or some of the muscles it supplies, and then a little bit about carpal tunnel syndrome. I hope you enjoyed the video.